Hello, today we'll be discussing leprosy. I'll make it as simple as possible. I'll try to explain the pathology and why there are two types of leprosy. So let's get into it. Okay, so right here we have, um, let's give him a name, Mr. John. Okay, Mr. John is fine. His face is fine. He's perfect. He's healthy. Okay. Now, Mr. John comes into contact. Let's say he went to a hike. Now, Mr. John comes into attack, into contact with an armadillo. Now, this armadillo is carrying a very dangerous microorganism known as Mycobacterium leprae, noted as the blue, the blue rod-shaped um, stuff in him. Okay. Now, Mr. John comes into contact with this armadillo, right? Now, this armadillo just transferred a very dangerous bacteria to Mr. John as mycobacterium leprae now after a few years or months mr john's face which was perfectly fine now looks like this we have nodules and we have areas of hypopigmentation so how does this bacteria mycobacterium leprae cause this hypopigmentation and these nodules on mr john's skin now it isn't always that um you get hypopigmentation and the nodules you can get either or you can get only the um, pathogenesis with the hypopigmentation or you can get the pathogenesis with the nodules okay now i'll be explaining both okay so here we have a hypopigmented skin so how does this mycobacterium leprae cause our skin to be hypopigmented okay so this bacteria mycobacterium leprae came into contact with mr um on skin okay so now this mycobacterium leprae is sitting in the hypodermis of mr john's skin so what happens when we get when something invades our body we have an immune response right you have an out you have an, a, an immune response so these um, mycobacterium leprae will be um will be digested by a, a macrophage okay it will be digested by a macrophage so this macrophage will eat this up but just like mycobacterium tuberculosis mycobacterium leprae cannot be um degraded right it cannot be degraded to the it cannot be degraded to the so the uh, macrophage presents an antigen of this to to the um to the t-cells and the t-cells then create a response right so the t-cells which create a response the t-cells which create a response the t-cells or cell mediated immunity um or cell immediated cytotoxicity i should say comes in right here comes in right here so this is our t-cells t-cytotoxic cells and they start secreting granzymes pufferins all sorts of things to destroy this bacteria but these um enzymes which they secrete don't just destroy the um, bacteria they destroy the layer of our skins or our melanocytes right here they destroy our melanocytes right here they destroy our melanocytes and they also destroy our nerve endings in the skin okay so now all we're left with is an area of um an area of epidermis, our uh, an an area of epidermis, and since our melanocytes are destroyed, we have an area of hypopigmentation compared to the rest of the skin, as we can see here, hypopigmentation, and there's also anesthesia here, as the nerve endings were damaged. Okay, so these green lines are our nerve endings, and the blue lines are our arteries, and the red lines are our veins. I'm sorry, the blue lines are our, our veins, and the red lines are our arteries. Okay, and we have a bone right here. Okay, so so this will so tuberculoid um lepromat tuberculoid leprosy will result in hypopigmentation because tuberculoid tuberculoid leprosy has a high Th one cell mediated response. Okay. So as soon as this bacteria comes in to our skin, 
the T cells or the um, macrophages and all these immune cells, they recognize this and they, they send the Th1 cell to secrete coenzymes, perforins, and everything to destroy this micro microbacterium, um, um, this microbacterium lepre. And in doing that, you destroy melanocytes and you destroy nerves, leading to a hyperpigmentation lesion. Okay, so what happens is if what happens if these T Th1 cells do not recognize this mycobacterium lepre. Okay, so here we still have our layers of our skin, our epidermis, our sweat duct, our hair follicle, our nerve, our arteries and veins, and our bones. So all this is the hypodermis. So what happens if the micro if the macrophage and the T cells do not recognize this, do not recognize this, or they cannot destroy this mycobacterium lepre. Okay, so if that doesn't happen, if this is not destroyed, mycobacterium lepre will proliferate, right? It will proliferate just like this. It will proliferate, and our T cells and our macrophages will become exhausted. So our macrophages will form epithelioid cells, which are nothing but a collection of macrophages, which are nothing but a collection of macrophages, and they wall off this, they try to wall off this um, bacteria. Since they cannot destroy the bacteria, the only thing left to do is to wall off the bacteria. And this is what we call as a granuloma, okay? So, in forming this granuloma, they secrete substances and enzymes to destroy this granuloma. And then the enzymes destroying the substance within the, or the bacteria within the um, center of this granuloma form what is known as a cheese-like consistency. So we have caseating granulomas. Now, it happens all over. Okay, so we have granulomas throughout the skin. We have granulomas throughout the skin, just like this. We have granulomas throughout the skin and caseating necrosis. And eventually, all those granulomas will destroy the skin and elevate. So we have granulomas all here, all here. And these granulomas will soon start to elevate the skin like so. They will start to elevate the skin and our skin will become nodulated, just like this guy right here. Now, if those granulomas reach the area of the bone, because remember, these granulomas are proliferated anywhere. If these granulomas reach the areas of the bone, we will have bone resorption, okay? So we'll have bone resorption, which can be seen here. So your fingers start to shrink. We have nodules in the face, and this is what we call as lepromatous leprosy. And in lepromatous leprosy, is as a result of a low Th1 response. So a low Th1 response. And since we have a low Th1 response, there is no negative feedback to inhibit Th2, therefore have a high Th2 response. And in the tuberculoid, we had a high Th1 and a low Th2. Okay? So now we'll be talking about treatment. How do we treat this, um, this lep mycobacterium leprae? Okay, remember there are two types, tuberculoid, which causes nothing but hypopigmentation and anesthesia, and lepromatous, which is the most dangerous one. Lepromatous, which is the most dangerous one, causes bone resorption, nodules, anesthesia. It basically damages everything, and it's because it, of a low Th1 and a high Th2, and this one is because of a high Th1. Okay, so that's what that is. So how do you treat tuberculoid? Well, we treat tuberculoid by giving Dapsun, which is a drug, and Rifampin, which is another, which is a drug used in um, tuberculosis, which is mycobacterium tuberculosis. And for lepromatous, we use Cofazimine. Okay, so these are the drugs we use. Okay, and if you want to test if somebody has been exposed, we use the lepromin test. Okay, so this has been mycobacterium um, leprae. And remember, mycobacterium leprae um, lives in cold weather. And so, yeah, so if this video, if you like this video and you understood some concept, don't forget to like. And if you like my other videos, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.